All right, guys, and we're live. Welcome to the Wrestling Rewind. This is show 33. And boy, do we have a show for you this week. <laughs> this is Dave's fault. So, Dave, oh, how no. are you, sir? Uh, it's a great day for wrestling, everyone. Welcome back to the only show hosted by fans that don't hate wrestling. I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, as the, you know, I've actually figured out how to kind of set up events a little bit better so people aren't just in the blind to watch shows coming up. So, you know, if you're joining us on Twitch, YouTube, all that kind of stuff, thank you very much. And you'll know that we're covering World War Three from 1996, our first WCW pay-per-view. And, I, I, you know, I was watching it and I'm like, you know, why does Dave want, to, want me to watch this? When's it going to get good? And then it just progress, it progressively gets worse and worse and worse. So we do have a lot to talk about and this is all Dave's fault. Um, so where do we want to start with this? I mean, I don't know. Okay, listen. So... A, I've been banned by the higher ups of ever picking a pay per view again. I think I like at least for about six months. For about six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is one of my favorite matches of all time on it, and I shouldn't even say favorite matches. It has one of my favorite moments in wrestling of all time, which is Ultimo Dragon coming down to the ring with eight titles, and I thought that would be enough to enjoy the pay per view. I forgot that that's the first match against uh, Rey Mysterio Jr., which it is a really fun match. If you have the network, go watch just that match. It's good. And, and he's defending all the belts as well. Yes, all eight are up. <laughs> all, eight, all eight are up. I'm like, this is the most ridiculous thing I have seen in quite some time. So let's just start. Oh, no, no, no. We, we got to set us up. But literally, for anyone who is watching, there he literally brings a rake of belts with him and defends all eight of them. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. But we will get to that. So... <laughs> the first um, some background for this show so this is uh, World War 3 and it um, you know it was blah, blah, blah. yeah so 1996 1996 initially I thought it was 1998 I'm glad we didn't go there but it took place November 24 96 from the North Folk, the North Folk Scope in North Folk Virginia uh, similar to the Royal Rumble format, the event was marked for the first time. The winner of a three-way, three-ring battle royale for a future photo shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. So, basically, this the, the main event, the main like concept of this is the Royal Rumble, but instead of having one ring, it's three rings. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it happens in November instead of January. So, that's kind of like the build for it. it it's... And we will get to that because, oh boy, is it, it's not good. It's amazing. I don't know what you're talking about. You love the tagline. 60 men, three rings, one battle royale, total destruction. I like that. We're, uh, uh, this one's like 60 men, three rings, one survivor. You do the math. What math? What are you talking about, yeah. WCW? It doesn't make a lick of sense. No, but we need we need to put some perspective too because before we just completely rail on this show for what it was, this actually happens at an interesting time in the wrestling business because so, WCW was leading in the yeah. ratings during this and time. He, I mean, this was the height of WCW in and, many respects. And that's what I was actually going to say to you. This actually is the height of WCW from like yeah. 1995, 1996, 1997 to the end of 1997 into 1998. Pretty much as soon as the Montreal school job happens, that's when the turn starts. Um, yeah. But you can see why. Listen, I want to say something really controversial off the bat, can I? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Goldust is the most talented member of the, the Rose family and the only one who I can stand. I hate Dusty Rhodes. Wow. And I, I hate Cody I'm Rhodes. with you. I, yeah, I'm not a big Cody fan. I just, I can't, I, he is the most annoying person on the planet on commentary. I'm like, please stop. Well, you just don't know what he's saying. Just the time. please Please stop talking, you know. But I, I love Tony Giovanni. Yeah. Um, Mike Tenay was there, and I was like, oh, my God, Mike Tenay, this is great. Um, really like Larry Zbysko. Bobby Keenan was fantastic. But every time Dusty opened him, I was like, please stop talking. Just stop talking. Well, and I think it's worth noting that um, it gets a bit, I mean, this was 1996, but some of the commentary is a bit racist, if we're being perfectly frank. It's not as, it's not as bad as um, what King would do, where it's just her, like horrendous. But yeah, 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 it, yeah. It, 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 a lot of it leaves 
there's a lot of insensitivity. Let's put it that way. In the a commentary. lot of insensitivity. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not. It's literally not as bad as what King says, which he need. You know, we talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about it every, every time we do a show. It's like I can't believe he said all that. Yeah. But yeah, this is WCW. You know, it, it was what it was. There's no outright, outright racism in it. But no, no, it's, it's just also, that's the way they. T- it's the kind of jokes that were told during that time yeah. period. But I'm just like, oh. Are these really the jokes you want to be making about your luchadors? I don't know if... But to be fair, that was a thing that just happened in WCW. Oh, yeah. You know, because it was of that time. The difference was King comes out and does outright racism and you're just like, oh, <laughs> you know. It's just, it's just like, right, It's not you're not even like trying to hide it. It's just, here it is, or outright, you know. I mean, on a plus, the show was much less misogynistic than most pay-per-views we've Which done is so true. Far. That's also really refreshing. You know, women don't get beaten up and aren't uh, sexualized. And, you know, it's just like, it's it's nice. It's refreshing. And now I, you know, remember why I like WCW so much as a kid, because I'm like, it feels completely different to WWE. Oh, yeah. Now, it, it is bad. No, it's terrible. But it's not as terrible as WWE was at this time, which was horrific. Bad. Um, well, the, the funny thing is WCW was just being WCW yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah. WWE was going for shock values, so it was <laughs> kind of approached differently. Yeah, but this was before he went into the Attitude Era. This was still 1996, so they were yeah. just, it was still the new generation WWE. So you had like the rise of Burr Hart and Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Um, it was obviously after the click had left um, with the New World Order stuff, but you can see... <laughs> I just think this last match. Oh my goodness! Oh yeah. What well, happened? the whole show, like you, you forget really how big the the New York New World Order were, and then you watch the WCW show, and you're like, oh yeah, man, they were just all over show. And the funny thing about it is, this is when it was still kind of over. Um, it yeah. hadn't reached peak yet. It hadn't reached saturation point where the whole show was just that. Um, and it was still like, oh, w- oh NWO here. Like the whole show was pretty much just that, and some new luchadors, you know. Uh, yeah, it absolutely was. And it's a totally different mindset. And I love the way they do it. WWE's tried to do this with NXT, but it just doesn't. It's not the same thing. Yeah. Where it's, they make it out as if there is WCW, the company, yeah. and there is NWO, this faction. And this was still the time period where they were acting like they were competing against each other, even though they were under the same, you know, they are getting their checks in place, but, well, actually, no, not technically, that's <laughs> some of them. But the point is that <laughs> we don't need to get into all that. But the point is that the show was very much a we're WCW, this is our company, and you're the outsiders. And I do like that well, well, it whole concept. Even, well, well, it wasn't even that. It was that at this point now, it's gone beyond the outsiders, and it was where WCW and NWO are right. two separate companies. Right. You know, or so, not the, companies, organizations. Yeah. Organizations is, is a better way. That's, that's initially, a much better way of putting it than what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's initially what, what they wanted to do. They wanted... Um, you know, they wanted NWO Nitro to be a thing. And mm-hmm. WCW Thunder. So that was the whole point of it. It's just, and then that's why they kept adding members and eventually it just didn't, it just didn't fly. Um, because obviously in hindsight, you're like, that's never going to fly. Um, but, you know, at this point it could have. Um, the show, the show is terrible. Um, <laughs> but it, it's not, you know, it, it has merit. Like the matches, some of these matches were very good. Oh yeah, Someone who doesn't actually, like who doesn't love to see a referee fight with his hand tied behind or with, against I an could, opponent with his hand tied around his back? I was shocked how Chris, how much Chris Jericho was over. Like even at this point, when mm. they did everything they could to like you know not bury the talent, just not show them. And Jericho comes out and it's like, yeah, he's already a superstar. Like in 1996. Yeah, and that's one of the things I love is that about WCW during this time period and even going forward, they always highlighted the smaller talents, which is kind mm. of odd when you think about what we know about Kevin Nash and his opinions that he's shared over the years about them not being you know, vanilla midgets. Yeah. I wasn't going to say that, but yeah, I mean, hey, that's you exactly can, you what can it quote is. him. That's what he says. That's it his, is what he said. Yeah. That's his like term. So he has that mentality. And yet, even though he is essentially booking a lot of this show, I he think, didn't book this. No, he wasn't booking this. This was still, when, did he, when did he start getting that? Oh, that, super that's what, creative control. That's when the wheels fell off. So that was like 1998, 1999. All right. Well, still, he definitely had a lot of locker room uh, yeah. sway politically, let's say. Yeah. And I, I just, I do love the fact that if this show had happened in WWF, for example, Ultimate Dragon versus Rey Mysterio would have gotten like five minutes. 
and they give it almost 18 on this card, which is something that I love. Yeah. And I'm just going to have to keep coming back to that one match as being a redemption point because otherwise Derek's going to kill me. I What I will say about the show was um, overall, you know, you can see how a WWF WWE show would be booked compared to this. Like as you said, Ultimate Dragon, Rey Mysterio, five minutes. Jeff Jarrett first joined 15 minutes. Dean Malenko mm-hmm. versus Psychosis on the dark, a dark match. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then Vince McMahon and Shane McMahon in the whole show. And that's what would have happened. Now, f- <laughs> for good or bad, for good or bad, that's how the show would have been booked relatively compared to what we've looked at in the Attitude Era, you know? Um, so the actual in, in, in ring wrestling around it around this time, and this why most people watched WCW was because it was the actual product was so much better. Oh yeah, the wrestling the generally speaking is. I mean, the talent that they had is absurd. Yeah, like when you think about it, like Rey Mysterio was just there hanging out, and, and this is Ray Ray at, at yeah, Ray at Ray's peak. best. Oh my gosh, he has two working knees. He's flying around the ring like you wouldn't believe. You know, he doesn't have those stupid tattoos. It's right. You know? <laughs> just attacked his tattoos. Oh, the terrible. Oh, my they're, gosh. They're, they're atrociously bad. They're not as bad as Jericho's ones, but they're up there. Jericho's ones just look unbelievably stupid. Um, but, yeah. Um, and blocked by Jericho. It's fine. His band still has me blocked, and I don't know why. <laughs> uh, they don't like the competition. That's what it is. That's probably what it is. That's probably what it is. Actually, funny story. So when I reviewed them, my friend's fans were open for them. And because I found out they had blocked me, I just spent the entire review saying how good my friend's fan was in the review. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good times, good times. It was funny, actually. In that venue that Jericho was playing in, it's like a dive bar in Dublin. Mm-hmm. Literally. So it's like there's like 200, 200 or 300 people there. But it's a dive bar. And, and like literally, like the toilet is like, what, six feet away from the stage? Not a good place to play. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea to go there, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, they got booked. They got booked. I guess. Yeah, it's just it's just funny. It's like you didn't even want to shoot for the bigger venue. No, you went for the dive bar. Okay, sorry. and he wore the jacket though. That's what I was shocked by. He came out with the whole sparkly jacket and everything. It's like, oh really? Well, the fair light enough. up one or the, the light up one? Yeah, yeah. Oh my I, God. Yeah, I was like, that stage is hella small. So fair play for committing to that. But, what year uh, was yeah. this? This must have been like what? This was like 2012? 2014? 2014? Okay. Yeah. I'll try to dig it out and post it in the group. I'll post it in, on the page. Um, it's great. If, if it's still there, I don't even know if the website's still up. But um, yeah, sometimes. Hey, there, is there any wrestling news before we get into this paper? Yeah. Wrestling news. Uh, has anything happened this week? <laughs> oh my God. I forgot. Yeah, right. So the ratings were down for a Raw for like, like the worst ever ratings. Okay. Right. So what did they? So I'm going to give you three scenarios, right? Okay. One of them is true, two of them aren't. Okay. This is the same. This so this week on Dave reacts to the news. We're going to have a guessing <laughs> game. So of these All three right. segments, Dave, Multiple which one? Choice. Yeah, Here which one? Which one did WWE actually do? Right. They brought out Shane McMahon, and he announced that there's a new faction of NXT guys to come up and challenge the main event. Right? Okay. That the brought, Shane McMahon scenario one. Yeah. Okay. They brought back Stephanie McMahon, and she's now the authority figure over over WWE as far as creatively on Raw and SmackDown. All right. Our number three, Shane McMahon has an underground fighting league. Okay, now here here's this is going to be weird because I saw some memes this week, so I'm not sure if the memes were real or not. So the memes I saw pertain to number three, but I refuse to accept that number three is what it is. <laughs> So I'm gonna go with number one out of pure hope. Then no, I'm wrong. It's no, number it's three. Real. <laughs> it's number three. No, it can't be. No, it is. It is. It is. We need to. Do we need to go re-review mm-hmm. Brawl for All and like let them they know. They literally brought back Brawl for All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was it. Yeah. So that's. The I need, I need to answer. understand this. Like I, I knew he was coming back to Brawl. So what's the what, what's the concept behind this? That's the concept. He has. Wait, what do you know? What are the details? Like. That's it. He has an underground fighting league where they still, where they just took the ropes down. They still do wrestling moves, so it's all worked. Oh my god, why? I, I don't know why, but that's what. So that's basically what it is. And it's not even like it's the tour of Raw. 
it's weaved throughout the show, so it makes less sense. And now oh, it's happening. Wow. And, and now the lads are like, oh, I want to be there. So they're like secretly going in fighting. And at the same time, there's a new, a new stable, which are very much Antifa, and they petrobombed like a, a network. Uh, what satellite. is happening in the world? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm so confused by what's going on in the show. They're just doing this stuff. I can't even make it up. So yeah, that's okay. That's I raw. did think that was made up. Like I thought no, you were just I thought no, you were telling real. me a Reddit rumor or something. This is no. true. This is really happening. Well, they don't call themselves Antifa, but they're dressed in black and they, you know. Well, no, I just mean the whole concept of this underground. Oh yeah, no, that's thug. real. No, that's real as well. So it's just like, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So we have all for we have Raw for all back again, but they decided to fake it this time. It's like I don't know, WDB, what you're doing. But you gotta keep stop. doing it. Keep doing it. I've loved all your pay per views except for Extreme Rules so far. Keep no, doing it. No man, we've had. I want SummerSlam. I want Punk to come back in the underground fighting <laughs> and just rule, rule it all. Get his redemption from UFC. But it's still fake. They're still doing wrestling saying. moves. The Viking Raiders were in there. They're still just doing their spots. It's like this doesn't work if you're doing spots. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Do you remember when, was it uh, Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe or Kurt Angle and AJ Styles had an MMA fight during one in, of the in, lockdown pay-per-views? In TNA? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was good, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, they kind this of is, made it look like a this, shoot, but it was a work. But this, but this isn't good. No, it's not. No. I, so I'm glad I set my DVR to record these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need yeah, to no, go back and watch. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, because I don't watch Raw live now because I just don't want to put myself through that, but when I'd catch up on Tuesday or listen to going in or something like that, I'm like, wait, what? What happened? That's and then you go back to watch it and you're like, all of that's real. How is, what? Who signed off on it? Well, no, I know who signed off on this, but you know what I mean? It's like that crazy old man needs to stop because this is not working. I mean, I love not anything working. Shane O'Mac, so I'm willing to give it a chance. But they're not even using it. Okay, right. Before we go to the show, right, let's just spend 10 minutes and play with this, right? <laughs> yeah, let's play with it. Let's play with it, right? That's one of your old phrases, which is hilarious. It is, um, yeah. <laughs> Surprise um, was nice. Exactly, yeah. Um, right. Here's how they can make it work, right? If they actually wanted to do it. Take a page from WCW. First two <laughs> hold on, hold on. The first two hours of Raw are raw, right? Normal show, fine. After ten PM, raw underground. Right, where you have like underused talent or whatever who want to go in, maybe you have crossover talent and book it like it's a different show. Like it's not associated with anything. You know, there is, it's kind of like a fight club thing. Shane Man is there, but he's not really involved as such. He might be the MC, but give it its own identity and just let it be its own thing. Because then people will be like, Oh, actually there's this really weird thing that happens on the third hour of raw. And it's, you know, it's something that I actually suggested um, with Adam a couple of years ago when they went three hours to do what they did in Nitro have like the first hour be your lucha ground uh, lucha stuff so you can and just have 205 Live be the first hour of Raw right. I thought that was the original concept for 205 Live and then they just yeah, kind of was... sprinkled it throughout and it lost its it lost its luster see the thing about it is you need, I, the, the issue of spreading it throughout the show it doesn't give anyone anything to grip onto it's just kind of like oh it's just it's kind of a mess but if you break it up and go, right, well, I don't like Raw so far, but I do like this show. Well, I'm going to watch this, and you'll pull in that third, like, third hour. So that's what I think they should do. I think that's a much better way forward. But where did they do it or not? Probably not. This will only last about two or three weeks, and then we'll never hear about it again. So, But you know, if WWE wanted to do that, that would be a much better way of doing it. Even rebrand it. So what? After the, the top of the second hour, it, you know, it just does a little video package. You go straight into it, and you don't even have to have commentary. You could have commentary, but you don't have to. You know, it's just let it be its own thing. Even even if you wanted to legitimize it more, bring in some MMA guys to kind of give it that presentation of, you know, like hire some ex UFC guys to be your color commentators. You know, oh, be, I don't. Hmm. Or even get Punk in, or even get Punk in to do commentary for. Like literally, just. Go with it. Don't 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 go halfway. And by right, so go, this just way, go all in. Yeah, yeah. Just go all in and just be like, right, we're gonna make a run for it. Let's do it. But no, what they're doing this this won't fly. This will just fizzle out. 
Well, here's a weird thing for you, right? So going to this faction that they debut. So this like burning down uh, network thing. This was yeah, a Gandalf debut. Was in this. Sorry. So who's, I who's don't know who we got. I don't know. This oh. is what I'm saying to you. They they literally just have them dressed up like I thought it was the ninjas, but it's not. They're just kind of dressed up in balaclavas and look like they're about to go protest something. Uh, you know, and it's like okay, you know, you're firebombing WWE. What message are you trying to send? To me, WWE, you are always right there. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? Socially appropriate times. I'm like, lads, maybe you shouldn't. Just no, but they, that's <laughs> what they're doing. Uh, there was, no, to be fair, there was talk that they're going to do a nation of domination, a heel nation of domination, which is like, oh, <laughs> really Careful. don't do that. <laughs> really don't do that. <laughs> really don't do that. So it's just like, right, I suppose this is like the least worst thing they could have done out of that situation. But yeah, I've no idea who's in it. We don't know anything about it. It was literally a one-minute segment in a three-hour show that was never mentioned again. And they <laughs> maybe they were just testing it. I don't know. That's the thing about this. They, they, le- <laughs> they leaked it by mistake. The, the leak- oh, wait, really? Team. Yeah, <laughs> the social that, network that. team. Yeah, that's why they did it. Because they're like, oh, crap, we better put it on the show. So, Dave, look, Ross, it was an absolute mess. Absolutely. I, I am so glad I don't recap that show anymore. I can't tell you how much I love this podcast. <laughs> Um, there is good news, Go though. Good news in the world of Vince McMahon. The Rock, uh, along with some other uh, uh, people, have bought the XFL. It is not yes. It's not dying. So well, kudos there. I'm very excited about this. Well, I'm just kind of glad that the XFL is still around now. Because like, it was kind of doing its own thing. The Rock, it makes more sense for The Rock to own it. Because it's like The Rock's show i suppose you know yeah, always kind of was yeah you can promote the heck out of it and he's got enough to his name at this point that's going to get some eyes on it and i mean how convenient i'm sure it wasn't a happenstance that a former wrestler <laughs> bought it but you know yeah, he probably got it for pennies on the dollar as well you know yeah well and i think of- for vince he's probably happy to see it at least go on because again we talked about this a couple weeks ago but it didn't fail because of Vince. I mean, it was doing really well in the ratings. It was getting really great reviews. This was just, uh, you know, times are weird right now. So it didn't yeah, it was, it, it was just the time of it, you know, when they were trying to like figure all this stuff out. And, you know, literally at a time when wrestling was doing good, it's still fine, but this isn't wrestling. And he had to furlough everything. So it was like furlough yeah. loads of talent as it was. So this thing was just an easy thing to cut off, I suppose. So, um, yeah, man, it's look, I, I'm happy that The Rock bought this to be fair when i saw the news i'm like oh well that makes sense you know that's what i thought it's yeah like, that makes sense to be fair it's kind of like you know if if a wrestling company did, did go under um you expect like a wrestler to buy it. you know that's what jericho wanted to do for wcw you actually wanted to buy wcw that's right Which probably sure right. uh but it was what it was one more piece of news here before we go on and one more story um Okay, you know, I was listening to, I listen to, I, li- I like the Observer a lot, and I like Figure Four. Uh, oh, so you're the one? What? Well, I, t- <laughs> I like the show. It's a, it's a good show. I, you know, kidding, I don't, kidding I don't agree. Guy. I don't agree with what they say. Of course not. But uh, not everything they say. But their their takes on it are quite good when it comes to like the product, and they're comparing the product to like hardcore WCW. And I would say, yeah, maybe. Like, I, I'll have to say, this, this podcast would be a lot, a lot less fun if we were covering, if we were covering modern WWE compared to what we're doing now, which is so much more entertaining and you know maintains your sanity a lot more. Yeah, that's um, like watching in World War Three to, oh, well. to keep your sanity. Um, but yeah, like I, I totally get where they're coming from, and their comparisons to WCW is probably apt. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen with WWE as far as their product, but they, they made record profits, so they're doing well. I go mad, but it's just like you know, the ratings are through the floor, and they're doing this Fight Club thing and all kinds of stuff. But we will keep an eye on that because it's really entertaining. Apparently, SummerSlam is going to be on a boat. What? Yeah, that's what they're talking no, about. No, it's not going to be on a boat. That's what they're saying. Or an island. It's not. It's gonna, we don't oh, know. So really, so wait, are they really trying to just go all in and copy Dana White and UFC? Now they're going to have Wrestling <laughs> Island over in the Middle East. Is that what we're going to get out of this? Apparently what they don't want is they don't want SummerSlam in the PC. I don't blame them. So whatever that means. And at the moment now it's a boat. It's a boat. Yeah. 
Doesn't Jericho do a boat tour for AEW? What is happening in wrestling? They're all copying each other and it's all ridiculous. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's what's going on. But now let's get back to World War III. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I was shocked that World War III happened in 1996. Um, I, I've been waiting for it to kick off any day now. And apparently it's been <laughs> going on for almost, you know, two decades and a half. So more power. So, so at this point, there was Monday Nitro, Saturday Night, Worldwide, Pro, Prime, and Main Event. So they were like the the, the series of shows that were actually on um, a part of this pay-per-view build. You know, it wasn't just Nitro. One thing that was, was quite hilarious was the fact that Jeff Jarrett's was here randomly. Like yeah. I look, Jeff Jarrett's career is hilarious in the 90s because it's like, I'm going to go to WWE. WWE don't use me. I'm going to WCW. WWE, WCW messed me up. I'm going back to WWE. WWE don't use me. I'm going back to WCW. And then he ends up founding TNA. It's like, you know, he's like, he, you know, he's he's like the Cody Rhodes of the 90s. But I like Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> you know, Bring it full circle. Okay, exactly, you got to call that, exactly, guys. Exactly. Yeah, I just hate I mean, Cody versus... Rhodes. I'm sorry. I just hate Cody Rhodes. He's a you know, mid, uh, he's a mid carter for life, and he yes. needs to just accept that. Like, listen, you were great at Stardust. Go back to being Stardust. Uh, isn't that a shame? The one thing we like him as the best is the thing he hates the most. Also, d- dashing Cody Rhodes was amazing too. That was oh fun. yes, we had the, the mask face and stuff. Mask, yeah. He was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. But we, we're, we're not saying he's a bad wrestler. He's not. No, we're not saying he's an, not an entertaining character. No, he, he certainly can be. He just should he is. be the should he be the marquee? star that makes you tune into a product no 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 he's not that's he's Terry's opinion that, that's the correct opinion um no he's not like no like uh, no sorry i just hate cody Rhodes. i just want him to go away like literally it's the worst thing about aew it's like he shows up and i'm like oh i have to stop watching the show now it's like it's you know what you're getting it, it, his matches have become almost paint by numbers which is odd because he's trying to do the opposite of that, but it's all right. What Hall of Famer or legends are going to be here? What emotional angle are you going? Just rest. Why isn't Kenny Omega the face of this stupid company yet? Right? Kenny Omega's just sitting there going, hey, guys. You know, it's like you have Kenny Omega. You have the books. There you go. There are guys who draw, and there are guys who, who deserve to be there. Give me Cody Moxley still- versus Omega every pay-per-view, every month, every year, How, and yeah, I will well, watch I, it look, all. I could do without another garbage ball between the two of them they don't really need to do that again but no i love know. that i love the two but i don't want to see it again as far well, as I, you know i want to see it so much that i'm going to a death match wrestling <laughs> show this weekend it's my first wrestling show of 2020 i'm so excited shout out to icw um, oh man. man it's oh gonna man. be great it's a they have it over two days um by the time this goes out there's no tickets so don't even worry about it but i'm gonna tell you what i'm doing anyway um there's it's happening very close to where i live so that's very exciting for me they're actually doing it as like a camp out um so you can camp out friday night and then saturday night and both nights there's shows um i think i'm just gonna go up on saturday i'm gonna watch friday night online but saturday morning i mean it's fantastic 10 a.m we get breakfast with the wrestlers 11 a.m is a Deathmatch weapons making workshop hosted by legends of deathmatch weapon makers. There's a at 3 p.m. There's a Q&A with New Jack. And if you think I'm missing oh my that, god. you're insane. Oh my god! And, listen, uh, listen, listen. You have to record that. I need that audio. That's what has to happen. I think, I think we could do something. And yeah. then uh, there, there's an official tailgate party pregame leading up to the show. And then 8 p.m. It is a deathmatch circus. There's going to be circus acts and freak show entertainers and so basically folks watch our watch our social media because dave is going to be covering this live so i can't wait that's gonna be unbelievable it's gonna be absolutely great and hopefully hopefully uh, in a couple weeks we can get the owner on talk about it because i'm i'm really excited for the i'm excited for the fact that getting to see wrestling live in person again is going to be i can't believe you're i can't believe you're gonna go hang out with new deck like that's (laughs) <laughs> that's scary <laughs> man like that's fair play <laughs> the only thing i'm i'm a little bit upset about is i ordered my aj styles mask uh like july 17th still hasn't like come on wwe ship it to me by now what is going on There's no like excuse. i know you got to focus on the underground fight club but you printed out the label from fedex like almost two weeks ago now and you've yet to actually put it in the mail what is going on 
I wanted to I wanted to have my masks for this weekend. Now, now it, I won't. It, 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 they had to take all those people to maintain the underground fighting league. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh my god. This is why you should use UPS instead of FedEx. What is going on? I don't know. Period. I don't know. I, yeah, I just tried, so that, I just look, I just tried it, to yeah. use Amazon Prime for everything because it arrives. Yeah, it actually arrives. I was like, oh, do I want to pay? That, that was the other thing. It was like, well, I'm not going to pay $15 in shipping to get it here in two days. I'm sure it'll get here within a week. No, nope. that was your mistake. Three. <laughs> no, it's going to be like a month before I get yeah. it. No. Yeah. Although, you know, funny story, actually. So at the beginning of this great sickness, I ordered two N95 two, two masks. <laughs> if you guys can't tell, we're being very careful in how we yeah how we allude to it because we don't want to get no the, the DM going on. But no, actually, there, what was a really good one? I heard uh, there was a YouTube channel I watched and they were referring to it. Something good. What was it? Um, the the King Bug or something like that. And so for a while, they just kept saying it. I'm like, oh, that's what that means. So yeah, mm-hmm. we're just kind of being careful with, with how we're saying it. But I ordered two yeah. N95 masks from Amazon. And I was like, right, it's the beginning. This is like February. And I'm like, cool, they'll be here in like a couple of weeks. He said, right, it'll be here in July. I'm like, all right, whatever. No, sorry, it'll be here in like March. I'm like, all right, whatever. March comes, no sign. I'm like, okay, I guess it's just going to take a while. April, no sign. And then I like hit my return, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, right, get my refund. And then randomly in July, they just arrive. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so it's, I don't know how that happened. So it's just like, you know, all right, cheers. You know, yeah, so. I have a couple of those because I'm going to Denver, not this week, next week. So for a four hour plane ride, you got to you gotta wear something and wearing the regular stuff would be awful because when I work, we have to wear them and it's awful. So yep. get something you can breathe in. Yeah. Yeah. So and I find masks are great yeah. for that. Yeah. They really are. I'm actually looking like, forward to being able to breathe. That's As I said, I don't I don't like wearing the normal masks because they are really hard to do anything in. Band we're not anti. Can we make this clear no, so no, nobody like freaks not. out at us? We're no, just no, saying no. they're uncomfortable and we're, we're looking for better solutions. Yeah, that's it. Like, well, that's well, it. We're not Holland. Like, we swear. No, listen, I've done my research, right? Yeah. It's like I get an N95 mask because I can breathe in it because it has a filter. And I like, I'm like yeah. you know, a lot of people don't really mind, but for myself, I'm like, no, oh, man, I kind of like to do this because when I, I don't like take it off, I just keep it on. And um, with the N95 mask, like, yeah, you can pretty much wear it all day. And you never realize I did an exam wearing one there on Friday. And when I went into gotcha. the exam center, the girl was like, oh my God. Where did you get that? I'm like, Amazon. She goes, I can't breathe in this one. I'm like, right? Get an N95. You're sorted. And they're not even expensive anymore. They're about like 30 in books. I got mine for like 30. But, you know, you, you know, do your research. You get it. But, you, you know, d- d- different people react different ways, I suppose. But yeah, we're not anti mask by any stretch of imagination, guys. So no, no. Do we're... not think we're not. But I'm just saying, <laughs> if you do struggle with it, face shields are good, but also the N95 yeah. is, is really good too. So there are options. There are options. There are a lot of options. And, uh, yeah, we advocate those as well. And hey, if there's any mask sponsors that want to sponsor us. You know, Fozzie has some great masks. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Oh, my God. Poor Fozzie. <laughs> Poor Fozzie. Anyway, let's I, get back. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, yeah. So what, 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 where have we let's, gone on this right. tangent? Let, let's get back to this, right? <laughs> let's so, get back to this. Okay. The show opened up with Ultimate, You're welcome, Ireland. Ultimate Dragon versus Rey Mysterio. This was a 14-minute match. I thought it was 17. 14 is what they... Uh, 1348 so okay give now I, I i love the the graphics and <laughs> the people on commentary could not get together on what to call ultimo dragon no nope. he was either ultimate or ultimo ring announcers calling him something different just really 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 well done on the research there guys i i did love the fact they came out with all the belts and i'm like this is how triple h <sighs> come out all the time oh <laughs> There you go. You yeah, set them up go. for that, guys. Yeah, exactly. Set them exactly. Up for that. But uh, you know, I really, I, I thought it was cool. I didn't even see. I didn't even know where most of those belts are from. I'm like, did he just like grab a load of them, or you know, I don't know. But it looked cool. It was the most interesting thing I've ever seen someone use all those belts with. I know that Dudley did something similar in TNA with all their tag belts, but that's less impressive than Ultimate Warrior with all his, with Ultimate Dragon with all his belts. You know. Yeah, when you need uh, Sony Ono to carry two of the belts himself because you can't hold all eight, I mean, that's just great. Now, my favorite part of the match was when you were doing the presentation, you know, showing Mysterio the belts. It's like the ref is like holding three of them and then uh, Sonny O is like, you know, <laughs> just kind of like, <laughs> so many of them. It's like, this is crazy. You should really just have one. I think that's what happened with the J.K. and Dragon. You eventually just kind of consolidate it. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I, I appreciate it. More belts. Everyone should have belts. You know, it's great. Why not? 
Why not? You know, Why it's not? fine. It's fine. But this is the match that made me a huge Ultimo Dragon fan. Um, so great much match. so that I very was a very great match. And I was maybe the one person who was so happy for him at WrestleMania 20. We don't need to talk about the slip. We all know what happened. But for him, that was his last goal in professional wrestling. He says, I just want to have a match at a WrestleMania. And, and he got fight. to do that. Yeah. yeah. And you Paul know, London was in it. So, I mean, it, it fulfilled a lot look, of my fantasies. Everyone had a good time. And that's the main thing. Nobody was hurt and everyone had a good time. And that's yeah. all you want. The next match. Oh, my God. That was Teddy Long. Right. Yes, sorry. yes. We got to talk about that. Yeah. I was just checking there because when I was watching it, I'm like, that guy with Jericho really looks like Teddy Long. Mm-hmm. But he also kind of doesn't. And now I'm just reading through Wikipedia and I'm like, well, it was Teddy Long. Oh, yeah. The graphic What was happened, there, yeah. Teddy Long? <laughs> what happened? You aged horrifically. But um, yeah, man. I so, mean, this was 24 years ago, man. Like, come Yeah, I know. Slack. But Jericho looks okay. Teddy Long doesn't. Sure he does. You know, except the worst thing about Jericho is that horrible Tattoos, tattoo he has yeah, there. Yeah, really it's like, awesome. what are you doing? Stop. Oh, does he have friends? I'm concerned. It's like, there's something oh about him. Yeah, I'm like, man, listen, you know, you should have a mate going, bro, listen, you know, that, that's a bad tattoo. Just don't. Don't. Okay, listen, if you work for AEW and you catch this show and we contact you for an interview, um, let me be the liaison, not Dara. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I actually like you guys. I like you guys too. It's just, you know, it needs to be said. Like, we rail WWE all the time too. To be fair, the, the, the very nitpicky things to, to go for with AEW, the main one is just Cody tattoos. Rhodes and, <laughs> and tattoos. And that's it. Like, everything else is perfect. Just remove those two things and you're sorted. You know, do you have acids and stuff you can burn tattoos off, I think, or lasers? Not too sure. I don't know how it works. Are you wait time out? Are you advocating that Jericho dips his arm in some acid to get rid of that horrible tattoo? Man. Oh, Maybe. what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, man. I don't know. It's These pretty crazy times. It's pretty awful. This is anyway. what happens when we watch a really bad WCW. This pay-per-view. was such a bad show, and it's your fault. <laughs> it's, so we don't, we don't. it's so bad. It's so we bad. We don't want to talk about it. It's like I was, I was sitting the whole time. I'm like, this show is so bad. Why does he want me to watch it? And it just got progressively worse and worse with, with some bright spots. And then it just got worse because the finished, because then you start WCW booking it. And it's like, what is this? So yeah, People that's why Russo you know, killed WCW. No, 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 it was already dead. It was already gone beforehand. So yeah, Jericho defeated Nick Patrick with Teddy Long in his corner and one hand behind, tied behind his back. And that's just, but straight away, I was like, this is ridiculous. But, uh, you know, I did like the way that Teddy Long is a referee and Nick Patrick is a referee. And I forgot how, like, much of a character Nick, pa- Nick Patrick actually was, mm. like, in WCW. So when he came to WWE as a referee, I was kind of like, eh, that's kind of weird. But now he's going back. It's like, yeah, he was really well involved. Um, and this, of course, would go on to Sold Out as well, where he was involved and all that kind of good stuff. But um, we'll get to Sold Out. And you think this is a bad show? Oh, man. Have you seen Sold Out yet? Sold out. Is that the one with the ladder match to get the taser? No, it's the NWO exclusive pay per view. Oh, yeah, it's not. Oh. Good. It starts off with everybody driving dumb, uh, garbage trucks to the ring. I'm in. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah, 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 that sounds about as good as Slam Anniversary. I'm in. Oh, <laughs> um, so okay. Our next match. Dude, was... I, you do get real TNA vibes, by the way, watching this show. Not in terms of production or anything like that. Just you see so much talent and uh, people in commentary. Right? Yeah. Exa- like, and just like, oh, TNA, 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 TNA. Now I see like kind of what happened there. It was an extension of some of the good parts of WCW. That's what I always said it was. I always said TNA was it was an extension of good parts of WCW and ECW with like less of a budget. And that's yeah. the magic of TNA. That's always what it was. AEW does, this, does the same thing. It's pretty much just modern day WCW, but with better booking and more mm-hmm. of a budget. So that's it. Like you're watching this and you're like, oh, I can actually see the lineage of these splinter groups after WCW, you know? Um, <laughs> it's just that, like wrestling repeats itself and everything is kind of the same if you wait long enough, you know? So it's, oh, yeah. it's interesting. Every 20 years. Seems every 20 years. Every exactly. Time. So. We're due to be seeing a lot of this stuff relatively soon. I was going to say we might see something like this again, but we actually did see War Games a we did couple see years War Games, ago. Yeah, so. which I was so happy about. I mean, um, we did get Ricochet's double backflip off the top of the cage. So, well, I do want to, I want to save discussion of the, the 60 man battle royale to the end because I have some comments on that. There was a squash <laughs> match with the Giant versus Jeff Jarrett. The so poor Jeff Jarrett. He came out with the worst team music he ever had and he got murdered by the Giant. Um, and that was it. 
Wait, you're saying this theme music is worse than theme music he couldn't even remember the lyrics to at his Hall of Fame induction? What? Uh, my my baby tonight. That's yeah. brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> I, love that. I think that's great. My favorite Jeff Jarrett theme music actually is uh, late nineties WWE Jeff Jarrett music. I thought that was fantastic. That's great. Um, that's see that back when I actually liked WWE. Actually, music sorry, sorry. The, the CD his and... his TNA team was really good too. My world. That was really good too. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was fantastic. Had yeah, like country vibes to it, didn't it? All of them have country vibes to it. Every single oh, well, thing he has, yeah, have country vibes to it. It's his thing. Also, he, I don't think he carried a guitar out this time, did he? No, he did not. Okay, good. No, I think because it's, it's. I'm always like, is the guitar brought out? I don't know. The other guitars he must have went through was unbelievable. Um, the budget, he, the budget oh, for those, crazy, crazy. Harlem Heat uh, defeated the amazing French Canadians. I, I, this was thought, not a good match. No, it wasn't. It was not good, which sucks because Harlem Heat are a great tag team. They just had nothing to go with on this one. So, you know, it was a bit of a bust. Sister Jerry defeated Colonel Rob Parker by count out in a one minute match. Also terrible. It was kind of a follow on from the first match. Dire. Mm. However, we had the second best match of the night Dean Malenko versus Psychosis. Dean Malenko winning with a phenomenal exchange. And it really was an AJ Styles kind of finish. That beautiful pole driver into like a bridge pin. Oh, yes. Beautiful. beautiful. I, I am such a sucker for, for bridges. Oh, I really it, it was fantastic. one of my favorite things in wrestling. Like that little, uh, that little sequence at the end where it was like a he, um, psychosis was going for a pole driver and then Dean leaned back, put him into another pole driver, finished it, and then did like a hook bridge. It was like, oh my God. This is brilliant. This is like top tier wrestling that you won't see anywhere. And he didn't. And that's the thing. As garbage level as a lot of WCW was, it had these nuggets throughout the show where you're like, you will not see this anywhere else. And also, it was great to hear um, like Tony Schiavone and his team are calling this one, but they made loads of references to Mike Tanay, who knew, who knew the names, because this he was the professor, you know. And right. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, they love Mike Tanay. And I'm just like, I love Mike Tanay too. It's, it's brilliant. I, I, I enjoyed I, his voice. It is great. You know, he's just, I love the way he calls matches. I think it's brilliant. But super fun. And while we're highlighting people in commentary or people with a mic, I mean, yep. this is such a, man, mean Gene. Mean oh, Gene Okerlund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. This is his time period in WCW. And man, he just adds so much. There's something Honestly, about him that just I'll, I'll always respect. When you go further on, further back, you get lots of people who you see in the WWE being underused. Mm-hmm. When you go forward, you see lots of guys in WWE who are in WWF coming to WCW and being used properly. Mean Gene is like case in point. I hated him in WWE. Loved okay. him in WCW. Because all his time was like, you know, with Hulk Hogan. And Hulk Hogan turns my stomach. So <sighs> the minute I see him, I'm like, I hate him. It's it's like, it's literally like the, it's worse than Cody Rhodes. Like, you know, I hate Cody Rhodes. Sorry. Um, this is, it's just... just dwell on that, guys. Yeah. Dwell, dwell on, there's retreated into his own brain and he's on his cycle loop of, I need more Triple H and I hate Cody Rhodes. I can't believe <laughs> he came out with that sledgehammer and broke Triple that's H's it. throne. That's the that's, thing. That's, it's that's like, moment, you have ruined, it? you've ruined it completely. Like any, any chance, any chance I could have given you is gone because of what you did. <laughs> So it's just like, yeah. Uh, we See, you know what? I feel like this is restaurant impossible. I just hit the nail on the head. I figured out what was really holding the restaurant back. That's, that's what just happened. That's that's the brain cycle I need to understand from there. Okay, fair enough. No, see, it's it's like it's like when Cena beat Triple H when I was at the house show. That just made me hate him completely, irrationally. When, when, when uh, I'm so angry and I can't remember his name. Help me. When Cody did that. I was just like, <laughs> no, we're done. There's no way. Anyway, um, so look, I'm gonna admit, the next match I skipped because the nasty boys are in it, and I'm like, I'm not gonna sit through. You know, seven. um, wise choice. Was it as bad as I thought it was? Because it looked- um, it's worse, man. Oh man, of course it is. No one in there can work, so it's like, well, you know how in triple threat matches, well, that's not true. I mean. The- Scott Hall and Kevin Nash can go during that. When time they did, yeah. Oh, sorry, Hill. Oh, sorry, they can, but they don't they want to. Oh, no, <laughs> and at this point, they just didn't want to, so they didn't. They just mm. showed up and did stuff and had fun, and that was great. But in a match, oh no, you don't well, want the Kevin Nash match or Scott Hall match around this time period. You just don't do not do it. 
Yeah, especially what we know now in terms of having read their books or reading shoot interviews, we know what was going on behind the scenes in terms of the kind of things that they were doing backstage. Am I being vague enough? I'm being vague enough. Y'all know what I'm saying. So uh, it always makes me wonder when I see like a little extra sparkle in uh, X-Pac or Six or whatever the hell his name is. I like, I'm like, oh, okay. This is one of those shows. I get it. All right. He's having a good time. He's having a great magical time. He's having and, a great uh, time. <laughs> great time. But um, you know how in three, cause since you skipped this, you know in three, three different like tag matches, you will, you only have two people fight at one time instead of it being a triple threat the whole time, which I've never understood. You know that, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, yeah, I really hate uh, when when there's a three way tag match and the six men in the ring. So instead yeah. of squaring off two by two, it's a three way match. Yeah. yeah so um, yeah. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash both get tagged in at the same time. Of course they do. Of course they do. <laughs> of course, of course they, they do. do. That's, that's and the commentator's like, oh, what are they going to do? Are they going to fight each other? And then they actually start to fight each other instead of just laying down, which, you know, the finger poke of doom is, you know, synonymous. <laughs> with these guys but dumbest thing they actually they ever. go for a legitimate pin and then and then it's one of the, one of the other teams comes in and makes the save and then it ends but it was what yeah i think hall hit knobs with the megaphone or something like that because of course Hart was out there with the nasty boys and i don't that's like another that. thing as well the man shows up i'm like oh you know it's just there's just i just have like a instinct of like gag reflex or i'm like oh you know i just i can't do it so the minute i see them i'm like yeah this is a match i'm not gonna watch and you know what i'm really happy that i did not watch that <laughs> match because it's everything i thought it was gonna be oh it was it was and more <laughs> so it's like okay oh gee well I, yeah i i this is the match that first time i tried to watch this through i fell asleep and i woke up during this i was like what is going on so i had to go back and yeah, I don't know yeah. why we picked this pay per view. Very, very odd choice there. So the the outsiders won and retained their WCW tag championships, which they held for ages, literally mm. like years. They just were just the tag team champions all the time for no reason. Um, right. But here is where the show really falls apart. I mean, this is where it gets fantastic. It does get fantastic, but it's also like <laughs> I can see why they didn't do it. Why they didn't bring it to WWE, right? Because you have three rings and 20 men are limited to I, I wish I had a, like had the graphics to use having TNA where they explain the match because that would be fun but I didn't think ahead um, but they need so that right. many rules yeah like, there, there's a lot of in TNA like I loved when they'd have the Kingdom Out match Kingdom they'd, out, have, yeah. they'd just be like all the rules to explain it um, okay so like this so, is what Vince Russo wrote down guys we're talking about yeah. TNA um, and he, so here you go. We you go. For this. this was so. All right. So here's here's how this match worked. Right. So three rings, as you can see behind Dave, twenty men per ring, and basically once once there was enough survivors, let's say, they all merged into one ring. Basically, that's kind of how it worked. Um, what a mass of humanity walking yeah. down to the ring. But the actual involvement itself isn't too bad. Like, you know, because we've seen 40 men Royal Rumbles and stuff. The problem I found. This is a battle royale, not a Royal Rumble, by the way, guys. Just so you know, everybody started in the ring at the same time. So you literally see. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? If if every 90 seconds. It just just never stops. So that's the main difference. Everyone starts in the ring at the same time. Yeah. Um, But here's the problem I had with it. Uh, Just purely from a. a, fan perspective watching it was very hard to do and it wasn't because mm. it was boring it's like those little screens were not enough now it's probably the only way they could have done it because there's no other way you could really do it except for now now you could actually could do it now but you'd have to do somewhere where you can pick where you want to watch it so you have like right four or five cameras so where you watch it on four or five views rather you can pick what one you can actually do on the network. It's it's the way to use it's the way to do football over here, where you can you can pick what, who what player you want to follow and stuff like that. So maybe WWE could do that. You hey, do I that thought to, about you know, this because that's how you could do it maybe. Obviously, you know th- we live in 2020 where we can actually see things because most yep. of us have large TVs just because yep. they're they're not expensive at this point. No, and I was thinking, oh, but this is back before. HDTV, flat, all that stuff. You think this was you're watching a tube television, 
So trying to see grainy three boxes showing what's happening in the three rings at the same time, it must have been torture to watch. You must have had no idea what was going on. Well, I was watching this on, I wasn't watching on the BK, I was watching on the, the monitor here. It's only 22 inches. And it's a high, it's a, it's a HD monitor, obviously, watching on the network. But even with that said, it's still very, very hard to watch. Oh, yeah. Like you're like, what's going on? And to be fair, each I like the way they. Have... No, I'm saying if you were to do it nowadays, yeah, it now would we... be a lot more clear. Exactly. But I'm just trying to put myself back into 1996 technology and what it would have been like to watch it then. But and... this is what I'm saying. So behind Dave's head, there, there's the three commentary teams that you can see. So Dave, just scoot your head back a bit. There you go. So right there in in the middle, uh, in between the rings, there's the three commentary teams. Oh, I see. Yeah, and each, yeah, each team, yeah. each ring had its own commentary team. And I think that's that was cool. a very, I think that was a very good way of doing it because it actually they were covering eliminations as they were happening. But what they should have done, and obviously they probably couldn't do it because it was 1996. Um, if they were to do it nowadays, do it the same way, but give people the option in the network to pick what ring they want to watch. So you could have oh, one wow. ring, two ring, three rings, and then like an overall view. And that's how I would do it if I was going, if I was producing that because I think that would be very cool, very impressive. really impressive, Steve, from a production standpoint. And you, well, you could do it. And you, I was thinking even you could do it in the PC because this is the setup they have in the PC. You could literally yeah. do it. Um, now, how many people can be in? There's like fifty people. So yeah, you might have to cut down, but you can still do it. Um, you fifteen you know, people ring. Fifteen people ring. Yeah, exactly. So. I don't know. I think this would be a cool idea to like do. But now, please don't. Do, please do not. Please no, do not do this. Totally. Totally do it. But if you're doing oh, it, at goodness. least do it correctly and give people the opportunity to see a little bit better. Because, you know, I think of all the times to do it, do it now when it's already set up to do it. That's but, true. Um, I mean, my biggest gripe was the fact that you already have 60 men. You already have three rings. Why did you need to start with eight people fighting outside of the ring? That's what I hated. That's oh. what I hated. It, I, that, I, that's why it felt like a train yeah. wreck as soon as it started. Yeah, the dun- it was see, already but, too much to keep track but, of. But the Dungeon of Doom suck and always did. The four horsemen were just crippled with like terrible feuds, and this is one of them in WCW. So it's like I hated that. That was the bit where I'm like, this is already too much. You're trying to watch the two little bits here and here, but then when you're oh, sorry here and here, but then when you're going over and you're watching through the ring, you're like, I don't know what to follow. I don't know yeah, what the follow. Because you're fighting up in the crowd, so really you need like four cameras yeah. on the TV. It wants to kick over what's going on, and it's, it's just too much, you know. So I think it's a good idea. It was just executed really badly, and the finish was ridiculous. And it wasn't ridiculous because of who won. It was ridiculous because it was. It had no stakes. It was another WCW win where the Giant would pick up the win and then go on to face Hogan and all that kind of stuff. But it was just, it didn't it didn't have that big feel to it. You know, what they should have done, they should have put the belt up on the line. But no way Hogan would be involved with this. And that was the problem. Mm. So, you know, if you were going to do this in the 2020 world, I think it'd be a very cool thing to do, honestly. Um, but you'd have to really kind of take stock. And my fear, if they did this nowadays, WWE would know how to take stock. And it'd be even worse than it was in this. <laughs> So it's okay, just like, but, so let's 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 just think about this. What if um, instead of just having sixty random people in three groups, twenty? What if you made it where brands? One of them, well, you could do brands. Would That's be great. what I do. You I could do, do raw SmackDown and, and NXT, or make it even more uh, segmented and have one be all cruiserweights, and the next one's all big guys, and the third one's cool. all, like, middleweights. That's cool. here's, and then here's, okay. here's the three here's... winners each fight each other at the end, and it's a pinfall thing, and we'll see which style of wrestling truly wins out, or something like here's that. Here's the thing, right? So WWE is struggling now to find stuff for, for the win, right? Here's what I do, right? Tournaments. we all the way up, right? So you have your tournament for it. To make stuff actually mean things, segment it out. Have your tournament... Well, a month-long tournament, three-week tournament on Raw, NXT, SmackDown. The winners of that get to go in and then have each ring and then the final one, as you said, be a pinfall or whatever. That's a cool idea and that's that would actually make sure that the shows actually mean something rather mm-hmm. than just garbage and it's long-term booking. You can have your whole year pretty much sorted out or we're in August now. 
you could do this where you, you lay the groundwork in August or your your blow off for for SummerSlam because obviously you need to build SummerSlam right. Start September, lay your groundwork in September. Start doing your tournaments in October. Have your your tournament pay per view, King of the Ring or whatever. Call it that uh, in November, and then have your blow off in December. And there you go. I know Royal Rumble is like a month later, but this isn't Royal Rumble. This is something completely different. So it's very you know, different. Very different. It's not. Look the same at us. Thing at look all. at us saving, saving a terrible show and saying, "Let's but there do you this go. You could, totally, you could totally do it. You just have to like mm-hmm. think and use your brain. It's not hard. Like <laughs> it's just not hard." But there you go. And, you know, and the thing about it is, in this time when people need something consistent, something like that allows you to be consistent, but also builds towards something. If you have the end of year being this crazy World War Three show, right? You can even just call it that because they own it. Um, yeah, I, think right? be, I think that would be cool. I mean, WWF, World War Three, three rings, one night. You know, boom. It's Three it's rings, one night. Yeah. That sounds like a really bad plot for uh, The Hangover Part 7. I, look, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not an American person, but, you know, it's just that in this time, that's what the takeaway from this. Would there, there be one ring to rule them all at the end? <laughs> Actually, that's not bad either. <laughs> still from Lord of the Rings. Uh, but yeah, it's. Um, I think WWE are missing a trick by not combing through some WCW stuff. Because now they have the opportunity to kind of go a bit crazy and do something like this. Would this work outside of a, a great sickness world? No, of course not, because it's too hard. Free rings, you're losing a lot of money, you're losing all this floor space. But now the fact that it's in the PC and it's just set up anyway, I'd just be like, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just have a bit of a laugh. And then, you know, you could even have put the title up. I mean, put the title up for grabs. Why not? I don't know. You know, they could figure it out, but it'll give them it'll give them all something to do. Everyone would do would be doing things. Even have a you know a, a special you know raw underground representation. So I don't know. Yeah, but, but we and with the close with raw underground since basically what we started with. I mean, it. What did I say back in June? I mean, this is the time period when WWE will try out really crazy zany ideas just yep. to see if they work. And yep. if they don't, they don't because ratings tend to be down during this yep. time of the year. And apparently Raw Underground is what we got. And I'm really super excited to get updated on this. Well, we'll see. And, you know, maybe if, if it goes on, we'll, we'll do a comparison show between that and Brawl for Raw All. For all. We'll see. Right, well, that's going to do it, guys. If you're listening on Phoenix 92.5 FM, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back at the same time next week. Dave, is there anything you like to plug? Yeah, follow me over on Instagram at the Dave Steven. Nope, at the Dave Stevens. And if you're listening to the audio of this, oh, you have no idea what you're missing out on. So exactly. Exactly. check us out on YouTube. Yeah, we're on YouTube. We're on Twitch. Um, all the details are over on nerdtownmedia.com. Of course, yes. fo- follow our social media. Uh, we have a we have a special uh, special fan show coming up soon where someone actually yeah. like sent in a submission. So thank you very much for that. We will be getting to that. We also yeah we actually Adam- will do what you suggest. So if you yeah, have something yeah you want literally. us to cover, we'll yep. cover it because I'm currently banned from making suggestions. <laughs> yeah, guys, if there's anything you want us to cover, you can email us nerdtonomedia@gmail.com. You can go Twitter, leave a comment underneath this video. Um, even message the Nerd to Know Facebook page, which is what this person did. So that look, that, we'll cover it no matter what it is. Like we covered this show, so we'll do anything. Um, and yeah, guys, so that's going to do it again. Thank you to the True Penny Channel for having us on. NerdToKnowMedia.com is where you can go over and check out every single one of our shows. We're live every uh, Tuesday normally, but obviously we're doing it on Wednesday for a bit. But if there's ever any kind of schedule changes like that, we will let you know on social media. And of course, if you're joining us on on YouTube, there will be a notification when we go live. So click the bell. And until then, guys, we will talk to you next week here on the Wrestling Rewind. Bye, guys. Bye.